You had a question, I'm sorry, John? Yeah, I have a question. About our electude into our canvas, is, is that something that our IT department needs to do? Yes, yeah, so um, I'll get into that later. Uh, maybe let's, we'll get started here and just do some inter introductions and I'll, that'll be one of the first things I'll cover, but let's, uh, um, I'll hold off on answering that for now, but that's a rather simple thing to do. So thanks for joining us, everyone. This is the um, training for the Electude package that we're going to hopefully uh, be able to initialize uh, for this coming semester, which is for some of you already underway. Uh, so thank you again for all your support in getting this particular project going. Uh, the project, as you know, is being funded primarily by the BACCC and then each college had a share in its funding. So as part of that process, I will be coordinating with each college's administrator uh, for the Electric Project uh, throughout the course of the project. Uh, just to recap what we're doing, um, each college has gone ahead and ordered the number of subscriptions that they need for their various classes, and there are three categories. So we have Auto Essentials, which is the basic automotive package, uh, the Automotive Essentials plus Electric, and then thirdly, the diesel package. So the, most of you are focused on the first two packages and those are, have been bundled with six month subscriptions for each semester. So at each semester start, uh, you'll be assigning those licenses to your various um, participating students. Once that particular voucher is activated, it is good for six months only. So if that student departs, uh, early, unfortunately, that particular voucher will no longer be valid. The good news is, at the start of the following semester, you will have another batch of uh, subscriptions available. So the value of the actual subscriptions is elongated because we broke them up into six month uh, tenors. Also, if they are not activated, they have a two year life. So if you do not use them this semester, they are good for a year and a half after this semester, which gives us a little more latitude as well, given what's going on uh, in our schools and COVID-19. Uh, and today, uh, Darcy Waddell from Electude is going to be facilitating the training. Hopefully all your questions will be answered. Uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to get started and get all of the vouchers in place and also the faculty will have what it needs to go ahead and get started. So without further ado, Darcy, I'll let you take it over. All right, well, thank you so much. Uh, my pleasure being here with you all. And I do, do re um, recognize a number of you just from being at the CAP conferences, you know, from time to time. So I'm actually uh, in, located in Great Bend, Kansas. If you don't know where that's at, if you threw a dart in the middle of uh, the US and it lands right in the center of the state. That's kind of where I am. But uh, uh, nice thing about doing webinars is you're, you're no close, no further away than um, next door almost. So my pleasure to be here with you today. I'm going to begin with uh, the email that I sent out the other day. This was uh, on August 16th. Pam gave me the, the key person at each school um, who, whom would be the website administrator. And so I just pulled up the one here for, for Mark uh, Burnback at uh, Burnback at Evergreen. But every site administrator at every school should have received an email like this, welcoming, welcoming, them, welcoming, welcoming them to the site. It has their web address here and initial admin password to get logged in. So what we had to do in order to set up these uh, vouchers is we had to convert your websites from trial to regular customer. When that process is done, it deletes the terms of service and it prohibits teachers and students from logging in. So, and if you're not able to access your website, the address hasn't changed or anything like that, but um, your whomever your chosen website administrator is, needs to go to the site, log in as administrator using this password and agree to the terms of service and then everything uh, is up and running again. Um, 
And then this email also included the access codes. So these access codes would be for this semester only for your school. Um, and there's, there's two, if you're, uh, if you purchased both automotive essentials and electric drive, those are separate codes. So um, for example, if I open up this spreadsheet here, just to kind of show you what this is all about, this would be the automotive essentials codes for both the standalone and the combined product. And so you can see here that the, the website domain that's assigned to these vouchers. Um, and then here's your voucher codes over here. This is the number right here that you would be distributing to each of your students. Um, maybe you'd attach that in an email or something like that. But these are all the codes for automotive essentials and automotive essentials plus electric drive combo uh, for the automotive essentials side of things. So the conventional automobile. Uh, of course, Evergreen ordered uh, all together. That'd be 166 six month codes. And then in the in January, well, early January, we'll send out another batch. And then here are the special codes for the electric drive. So a student that purchased the, uh, the combined package, automotive essentials and electric drive, you would give them one code from here and one code from here. The, and then of course you got your product group name over here. So uh, it's kind of up to the website administrator to kind of keep track of these codes. So every school should have gotten their allotment. Uh, check them, compare them to the spreadsheet. I was did, did as careful a job as I could to double check and make sure I was getting the right number. Um, but I think, I think we're good, but double check and just make sure you got all the codes that are due to you. Um, if for any reason, let's say halfway through the semester, you have a late enrolling student or something like that, and you just need one or two more codes, just contact me and I will, I will provide you a, a, a code at no extra charge. So we always provide, have a little bit of a, a leeway there. So we know, we understand that students are gonna start and drop. And so if you need, you know, two, three, up to five codes uh, extra, um, just let me know. Uh, we're, not, we're not stingy with those. And uh, we're just happy that you're, you're on board with us this year. And we hope it's a good experience and that you'll remain on board with us for many years to come. So uh, with question. that, I'll just pause for a moment to see if anybody has any questions about these, what these vouchers are. I'll, I'll discuss on how to activate them here in a minute, but. Uh, I have a question. Please. Okay, so uh, as an instructor, do I get to see these codes or just by administrator? I'm going to kind of leave that up to whomever your administrator is. I, mean, I think each school will probably have devise their own plan on the best way to distribute these to your students. Um, so um, as Pam said, they have a two year shelf life, meaning they can sit on the shelf for two years and it can be the, the last day of the second year. If a student activates that code, they're going to get a full six months. So, um, you just want to control when you give the student that code because as soon as they enter the number, uh, that's when their subscription begins. And when will they be prompt, <clears throat> prompted for that code? It depends on if you're integrated through Canvas or not. If you're not integrating through Canvas, Canvas students will be prompted for the code when they click on an elective content item and try to open it. So um, once they try to open an elective module, it's going to um, prompt them for the code. I have, okay. I have, and same similar experience in Canvas, they're going to be prompted for a code once they enter elected for the first time. Um, but okay. it's so, so um, we had the trial version, and I was as an instructor was able to send out emails to my students through through elected for them to register themselves. Now, did that email that I sent out include one of these access codes? No, there's, well, I guess, yeah, I guess, um, no, this, the email comes from the system. So this would only be if you're, you're not integrating. So, um, if you're not integrating to Canvas, yes, there is an option where you can log in as administrator and have email addresses. Um, you can have 
accounts created automatically in the system by putting in an email address and the system sends out a, um, an email with the student's login information. So if the system is sending out the email, there's no way to attach those codes. However, if you're creating the accounts and you're uh, sending out the email to the students, then yes, you could, you could do that. Do, when I send out those invitations, do, do one of our codes get used? If the student puts the number, when the student puts the number in, yes, that code would be used then, yeah. And it's, you know, I don't, it's, and it's going to be up to you guys to, you know, how you manage this spreadsheet. Uh, that's why I think it's best for maybe one person to kind of manage these. You wouldn't want to accidentally send the same code to two students, you know, and then the code not work for one. So there will be a little bit of a strategy on how you manage those within your department. Um, so as, using the trial version, it didn't use any of those codes then? It was right, no. Um, during the trial version, you just had an open website. Um, so so what are, since, since I sent this out and some of my students were using it, you know, over the summer uh, for the trial, when we migrate to the, to the pay, per, pay for version, are those students going to lose their information? And are no, they no, no information is lost. Uh, uh, going from a trial to a customer site, so. So then at that time, our numbers would be used then for those students that are already signed up, right? If they log in, um, like today, or right now that your site has been converted to, to a customer site, so anybody that, that logs in, uh, it's going to request a voucher right now, so, um, but if you, if you have certain students that you're still trying to finish up the spring, I'm sorry, the summer semester, um, just let me know. I can, I can uh, just contact me on the side if you need a, like a one month voucher to get students through the end of the term. No, it's not that. I just need to make wonder if like the students that were doing their work, are they going to lose their work once we migrate over? And if we do, is it going to use up one of those numbers? And if not, right, that, those are really good questions. Now, in regard to the migration, uh, and this is not a shortcoming of Electi. This is how this Canvas and the, the, the LTI platform or the tool works. So, if during your trial you were using the Electi LMS, you created the usernames and the password, and that data is on your site today. Once you integrate with Canvas. That data remains there. You'll be able to use a, a button in Canvas called direct access that will take you into the Electu pl platform and you'll be able to, just like I'm doing right here, you'll be able to go to the student tab and you'll see your, your, your students and groups from the trial period. However, any of those, once you, once you complete the integration, any of those returning students that hit Electude through Canvas, the very first time that username, that Canvas username hits Electude, it automatically creates a new account. And, and there's, no, um, there's no way within this, within the standard, the LTI standard to merge an old account with a new account. You'll still have that previous student data that you can reference, but every student will get a new automated ID through Canvas, and there's really nothing we can do about that. Okay, now, if we, it, when we migrate to Canvas, are the students going to be able to log on to Electude Web still? No, when, uh, when you integrate through Canvas, the administrator button will still work because you still need direct administrator access outside of Canvas, but the student and teacher buttons, those are disabled uh, because uh, due to the integration, they have to gain, students and teachers have to gain access into the platform through Canvas. Okay. So, so as a teacher, you would go to your Canvas course shell, open it up and uh, you'd enter it you know, that way. Once you're in any one of your Canvas shells, you can use the direct teacher access and go right into Electude, and then you can go to any group that's automatically set up in Electude. You'll be able to see all your Canvas course shells in Electude 
once you use the direct access button and you're inside the Electude environment. So it's almost like you got Canvas here and Electude's merged with it on the inside. Canvas is your portal into Electude, but then once you're in Electude, you'll be able to, it'll be very, very familiar to you. It's, it's exactly how Electude runs today. So you really kind of get the best of both worlds in my opinion. You'll have the red and green progress bars, everything that you had during your trial will still be there in the Electude side. And then you'll have the automated reporting, uh, the autom uh, you won't have to set up groups or students, all that is gonna be done automatically through, through Canvas. So uh, for those of you that have you know, 100 plus students, uh, the workload is gonna be much less because Canvas is gonna create those classes, Canvas is gonna create those student accounts, and, um, and you won't have to mess around with exporting spreadsheets and things like that and getting grades into Canvas, those will all be in there for you. Um, one of the things that um, you need to know about the Canvas integration in regard to language, if you're making, if you've made a lot of self-made courses in Electude, those self-made courses, those were made in American English. That's when you, how, how you, when you tile them. And then when you link with Canvas, there's really no um, ability to, um, for students to, to change languages with those self-made courses. So you will probably lose some language functionality when you're linking to, to Canvas, but um, you know, there, that's probably the only downside. What, what, what other language, you're talking about English language translation? You would lose. Yeah, yeah, like in the Electude LMS, you know, you can go, you can log in, go to a module like I'm doing here. Start something up like this, you know, now obviously this, I'm in the American English language right now, but a student, they can go up to settings and they could change their language to Korean, for example. Mm. So it's they would have to know how to speak English to do all of that to convert it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there there are, you know, um so some of this functionality is is most likely not gonna work so well when you're integrated into Canvas. Um that that part won't work. Well, not very well is what I'm kind of hearing right now. Um okay. Okay. so um, I, I hate to say it, but I'm a little confused. So um, right now I have some classes that are going to be in the fall. Um, the Electude is not right at this moment migrated into Canvas. There's ITS is still working on it. Um, okay. How do I as an instructor, or is there, how can I as an instructor create my content for that course um, in the meantime. Okay, all right, let's, yeah, let's, let's maybe, let's start with that. Let's, I know there's, um, let's talk about content. And then um, I knew there was gonna be a lot of Canvas questions. Uh, so it's, there's really kind of two sides. You got, you got the Electude creation side and uh, the Electude world over here. And then you got your Canvas world over here and then and they kind of meet in the middle. So um, if we kind of set Canvas aside, uh, other than if you're already integrated, you will have to access Elected through that Canvas. But once you're in here, let's say that, okay? So once they get your Canvas fixed up and you're able to get in, launch it, then you, you'll be able to go here to courses and uh, you, you'll have access to what products you purchased, you know, automotive essentials, uh, electric drive, heavy vehicles. And then um, right now, nobody has any, nobody has partner products on their site. So if you are wanting to keep Moto Logic or Haynes, C-Car, that's gonna have to be a separate purchase uh, from each camp, each campus. So that these products were not included in the, the purchase but everybody will have automotive essentials, uh, AST and MAST, and then certain schools will have electric drive and other schools will have 
the heavy vehicle systems and um, uh, commercial, the commercial vehicles course that comes with that. So, um, but once you're inside Electi, yes, you can start building your, your content. So uh, in Electitude's world, uh, course, that's your content. That's like your book. I know in Canvas, a course is something a little different. A course is where your students are. And that's a little confusing, I know, the terms. But when you're in Electitude, of course, that's your content. And so if I look into AST and MAST here, you'll be able to access these, these content items. You can open something up and uh, you can make a copy of something like let's say you wanted to start here with the electrical content you can you can assign this to your your groups that are created in canvas you, you, so um what you're going to have this is maybe tricky for me to to do both both ends of this so in times past under students you guys had to click the plus and you had to create a group Let's call this group uh, 10, 10, 12 auto. Uh, maybe this is a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class or something like that. So that's my class, okay? So in times past, you had to create these classes. When you're integrated with Canvas, once that integration is done, these groups are created automatically. You'll have them all sitting in here which is gonna be really nice for you. You won't have to create this. But what you will have to do, once, you, once those groups start populating, once they get your Canvas working, you'll have to click on the group and you have to go to courses, either the Electude courses or maybe it's one of your self-made courses that you've built in the past. And then you have to you know, drill down and if I want to assign the engine repair course, I got to assign that to my, oh, it's electrical course. So yeah, I'm going to assign electrical. You still have to do that. You have to assign the content in the elected LMS to the group that's created in Canvas. And then you walk back over to Canvas and, and you get that teacher manual out. And there's a couple buttons there you got to push to assign that content in Canvas. So it's a little bit of a two-step process. The very first time you teach the class, you, you assign it in Electude, then you jump over there to Canvas and you click a couple buttons and you assign it there. And, but then the next time that course rolls over, the, the, uh, everything is gonna be pre-populated for you. So a little extra work on the first time you teach the class, but each time your Canvas course rolls over, it's going to have, um, you know, the content's going to be pre-populated there for you. I got another question. So my IT department, once they migrate our Electude into Canvas, then Canvas the program, Canvas the people, will automatically assign a name group to my Electude? Yeah, right. That's uh, a group is automatically created according to whatever your Canvas course shell is titled under. So whatever, okay, so you know, like your, it'll probably have your course. Does it have your course reference number on it? Probably in a title or, yeah, there'll be. I, however, you see. identify your Canvas courses, that will be what, how your groups are set up in Elective. Can I share a couple screens with you real quick? Yeah, sure. Okay. Is that Pam? Can we allow him to share? Well, I was just, yeah, I think I, let me see if I can do that. I probably have to stop sharing my screen. Yeah, gonna, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so. so John? Yes, okay. I'm here. Okay, whoops. So this is my screen right now that I have. I guess my administrator assigned the name A Tech 12, 1220. Now that's, if I go to, um, I got Okay, John, you should be able to uh, share your screen. So at the bottom of the screen, I think I am. Here. yes, we, we can see yeah. the screen. Perfect, great. Okay. Happened faster than I thought. So this is what the I, my administrator assigned to this. Now, when when the IT department Canvas people, whoever does this, assigns it, that's you know uh, an abbreviated version of my course name. So are they going to put the whole thing in there about what it all says? Yeah, I'm, I'm checking your site now to see if they are, do they have the integration done? No, they've been asking for permission. 
Okay, so that would have been that would have been a self-titled group uh, that was created just like I did a few minutes ago, where you click the plus and you create the group in Electude. So somebody titled that one manually in the Electude system. Now, once you make the integration, that group will still be there. You'll be able to see past student groups and things like that. But it's my understanding that whatever, however your courses are titled in Canvas, that's exactly how it will be created in Electude automatically as soon as those rosters appear. So when, that, when that happens, I'm gonna, are, are all my students that are here, are they going to be uh, all there too? Yes, those students will remain there. And those would be, I guess you could call those um, legacy students. You'll okay. still be able to see their names. You'll be able to see their results and things like that. But if any of those students come back in your, once your integration is complete, mm -hmm. they're going to have a new identity, a new username through Canvas. You'll still see their name in parentheses, uh, but it's, uh, they're going to get a new account. And there's no way to merge the old account with the new. Okay, so they're going to have to take their tests over again. Uh, or you would have to go in, use the Electric Direct Link button. Right, and, and give them all their scores. Yeah, right, correct. Okay. Yeah. So you'll still see all those names. Nothing at ATEC 12, Fall 20. Um, that, that'll still be there. Um, oh, okay, yeah, this is a class that's already started now. I see. Yeah, it's not well, one from the past spring, yeah. I, I let them run, this is the trial version, and I let them run with it for, you know, about a month. I think that's how long we had it, so they could try this out before we got yeah. up to the version. But uh, um, we paid for the full version. I think it still has to happen. Um, y you know, you know how schools are, they, and IT and people, and it takes forever to get anything done. So I don't know when we're gonna get access to the full version or when it's going yeah. to be so the step one um step one i think i sent out a, a second email to all the administrators after i sent the vouchers um step one is you need to get your canvas administrator in touch with myself so have them have them shoot me an email whatever needs to happen get your canvas person in contact with me uh and then i can coordinate with our um canvas developer and the two of them they get on the phone or on a webcast or by email it takes about 20 minutes of kind of swapping some numbers around some codes and things like that for the two systems to kind of shake hands and then then you'll be able to uh, begin building your you know building your uh, your courses out so this is our email that he sent out to you hi darcy Just want to make sure you got this email so that it can happen. Yeah. Let me, are you sure? Uh, let me. We don't see the email right we now. We don't see an email. Oh, different screen. Hold on. <laughs> They'll only allow you to share like one screen at a time. So I think this is it. Yeah. Okay. So this is from my, uh, my, uh, my administrator, my department chair. That's letting Canvas know and see seeing you. And here's the one where they see where you've got you. Thank you for reaching out. Darcy Well. Yeah. So let me let me see where we're at here on that. Let me because I've been playing like the ping pong between him and canvas doing zoom meetings trying to figure out and they oh, you, all you got to do is go to navigation and move it up and it's not there <laughs> you know and uh and they say you got to get in contact with electude and so i asked my administrator to my department chair to this is the email yeah what was the guy's name again i'm just going to search for it here rick, rick greenspan greenspan rick greenspan yeah, that name sounds familiar. Right here. Yeah, so on the August 14th, uh, 8.42 a.m., I 
sent an email to Rick and I CC Jacob Spotsville. He's, they've right. got the integration manual. They've got the teacher manual. Um, they've got everything. Let me follow, let me, um, let me include you in a follow-up email. Well, that's what we should probably do. Yeah. Find, find out because we start school on Monday. And I, you know, I don't, I don't anticipate jumping into this like the first week. But, right. Uh, but like the ne next week, I'd like to make sure it's all assigned and integrated and they can click on it. And I don't know how, you know, I'm learning this as fast as I can. Right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you really need to, you really need to be inside the um, elect to from Canvas to really do, you know, whatever. Fair. I mean, you can, ex right now, if you're not integrated with Canvas, the probably the best thing to do is start exploring elect and things like that. And you can start putting together content, but you're not going to be able to sign anything. Um, there's going to be some things that you won't be able to do. Um, right. So Actually, you got a quick question. What's going to make our lives easier trying to integrate it with canvas or just going through your, your LMS. That was well, my next question. <laughs> because yeah, I, listening that's... to John, I'm like, you know what, maybe I just want to just m manage it myself through your LMS. Right. Um, I guess that I guess that the answer to that question is if you used it last spring and you oh. were happy with how everything went and it wasn't too uh, inconvenient to add those students and you're happy with the way you're running things now, maybe there's not much of an advantage for you. What's the, you, the big advantage is that the students get pre-populated. That's the major thing. I mean, if it's really for the, those schools that have two, three hundred students and the teachers um you know having to oh, I have between 25 and 30 in this this semester i got 12. so yeah um, then so we can't upload an excel file with the student list into it oh absolutely you can if, if you use the elected lms but you won't obviously need right. to do that right maybe so i should start maybe so i should... could upload our, our entire student list and then assign them to the particular to a particular uh, group automotive all, a particular group, which would be a class. Yes. And then, and then uh, now, can the teacher do that assignment? If if the students are already in the in the in your LMS. Yeah, may, maybe if I take the screen back here, let me uh, let me show yeah, you. Why don't you. Why don't you give us a lesson from that? Why don't you well, let's can can you just take us from using the electude LMS only? Yeah, I think that would be best instead of confusing too many things with yeah. Canvas. And, and um, let's let's start with let's just start, stick with electude a little bit. Start and, with putting some students in there, and then how we get those students to our teachers and how the teachers, you know, assign modules or whatever you, you know, assignments or whatever. Sure, That's sure. That's what I let's, need to know. Sure, let's, let's do that. Okay. So, so what, one quick question. Yeah. The Elect2D LMS, the, is each college given their own specific access? Yes. And, okay, so what does the administrator have to do so that we can log into that? Okay. So what the administrator needs to do, um, whoever got that email, I think uh, you're at Evergreen, correct? Yes, yes. So um, that they would, the administrator needs to, to log in using that password I would have sent to them. They agree to terms of service. And, um, and then, and then you, if you've had a login in the past, it will then work again. You'll be able to resume use. Um, If you don't have an account, the administrator uh, adds teachers. So you click the plus and you give your teacher a username, first name, last name, and you can uh, set the feedback, whether you want the teacher to receive feedback and you click add and that gives that teacher um, a login rights to the site. I got a question right here on this. Um, the one button that I don't have is uh, can delete students. So oh. if you um, so if you don't have that right by default, it is turned off. Um, so you log in as administrator. Um, here I'll show you here. If I'll just use my own account here. So here's here's my username, my stuff like that, and then right here cannot delete students. You just click on it make it so okay. you can delete students, then hit okay. okay. So, so 
but my administrator, Rick Greenspan, would have to do that. And if he didn't do anything except uh, put my name in an email and stuff and said, okay, then I would be a teacher then, right? Right, correct. And okay. if the other thing that might not be changed, you want to see, uh, you're probably set to not receive feedback. No is the default and you have to flip that on. Uh, so you might want to have um, him check, log into his administrator, open up your account, make sure you're set to receive feedback. That's really important, especially if you're going to be teaching from a distance, your students need to be able to communicate with you. So I would have that turned on. And then, you know, if, if you're a full-time teacher, uh, you know, it might be handy to be able to delete students. Like if for some reason you accidentally create two accounts for the same That's exactly student. What I did. That's what I did. Um, then you could, you could permanently delete the extra account. Um, okay. By default, if, if no teacher is able to delete students, only the administrator can do that. So the, uh, the administrator can go over here to the student tab and they can delete, permanently delete students that are in unassigned, not a, not a member of any group. So if they, um, if they delete a student, they go into a trash bin. The same would be true for the teacher if you have those rights. If you permanently delete a student, they go into this trash bin and they'll be there uh, for six days. And then on the seventh day, that's purged and everything is wiped clean. There's no way to get that data back. So if you accidentally, quote unquote, permanently delete a student, you can still get them back by hitting the refresh button and they'll, and they'll go back into unassigned um, but after after seven days uh, it's uh, they're gone for good so just use some care when you're if you have these rights know that um, once the sixth seventh day is, is come coming past then then all then it's going to be it's going to be gone so. so so about integrating with canvas again um if if we didn't want to integrate with Canvas and the, and the motion is already happening, um, is there a way not to let it happen? Oh, sure. That's, you can break the integration anytime. Even, even if you're, you're hooked up with Canvas today and you want to stop that or you want to turn that off, you just go over here to settings in administrator. So you log in as an administrator. You go to... So my department chair. Okay. Uh -huh. You go into external <laughs> access. And like what you're going to have there is, is right now, if you're, if you're integrated under external access, this is going to be set to LTI. And, um, and then it's going to, um, what you're going to do is click on this button, hit the drop down and just say not allowed. That's just like a light switch, just turns it off. It's not going to delete any of the codes that were previously put in there. If you change your mind and you want to go back to Canvas, then you just flip it on like a light switch and, and turn it what back on. For? So what, what does LTI stand for? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm an automotive guy, but I'm not an IT guy. It's learning tool, learning tool integrate. I don't know. It's some kind of a, it's some kind of a, uh, it's a standard. Um, you probably have to Google search that one. I'm sorry, I don't have that answer. <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I like knowing those things. Yeah, okay. yeah. But it, it, well, is a, it is a relatively new integration uh, format. The, the term LTI, I think it's been around for a while. A lot of the other publishers support LTI integration. Ours right. is a little different. It's the latest version. It's LTI 1.3, which is the newest, the newest version of this, so. Yeah, so so yeah, if you want to rather use the Electude LMS and you've already integrated, you can break that integration just by clicking not allowed. Then all your, your buttons will begin to work and everything like that. And, uh, and what does LMS stand for? A learning management system. I know that much. There we go. Okay. And can we have two administrators? Yes, uh, there is no... Uh, unlike the uh, teacher and student where you have a username and a password, the administration is just a password. 
And it's not uncommon at all for more than one person to have admin rights. We initially, when we set the site up, uh, we have to, we have to uh, put somebody's name down and, and provide that one person with the admin privileges. But once you essentially have the keys for the car, it's up to you know it's up to the website administrator who who he lets drive the car you know so um so, once so if you, you have a you know a generic password or something like that then the administrator can share that password with whomever they want so basically because this elected is such a small you know area you know once you sign up as an administrator, you know, you put your name in and you give it a password. It just looks for a password then, right? Because if the password is there, then it's going to go to that administrative account. Yep. What if someone, two people have the same password? There's only one password for administrator. Well, how does it know what account to go to? There's only one, there's only one administrator account per website. So every, every well, school has their own unique elective site. Oh, okay. School elective site. Okay. There you go. Okay. Can, can I make us say something here? I really wanted to see how to use elective. I think I'm, I'm feeling really bogged down in some of these, these details. Um, I, know. I know you're, I know you're curious. Um, I can't remember who that was, but um, I know you're curious, but I really like to see how to use the program. Okay, um, so let's let's while we're here in administrator, let's let's go ahead and, and talk about how you would uh, enroll students. So, once you get the uh, the admin account, uh, the password, um, you're obviously going to enroll teachers. So if you're not enrolled as a teacher yet, log in as administrator, click the plus, enroll yourself as a teacher, click add, and you're going to have have a a, a teacher access into the into the platform um, if you if you lose track on what you're doing like up right now i'm under teachers this question mark is your user manual you get the same one when you're logged in as a teacher and it's so right now it opens up under teachers and it tells me everything about rights and how to set up teacher accounts really handy if i go over here to students and i go import student accounts and i click on the user manual it talks about how to import student accounts. So that's a really nice feature having that at your fingertips. So, uh, so when it comes time to importing students onto the elected LMS, and this would be for non-integrated customers, no, no connection with Canvas here, you click on import student accounts, and then you click this little plus button here. And this is how my site is currently configured I need to put in a username, first name, last name, and email address. Um, you can configure what, how you enroll students by, by what's checked off here under settings, import, export. By default, probably most of yours are gonna be, have all these items checked. So when I go back over here to students, this is probably how 99% of your sites are set up right now. So you open up any old spreadsheet. Doesn't, um, you can do that right now in here. Open up a spreadsheet like this and username, first name, last name, email, group, password. This is how you would Darcy, wasn't there something in the settings about ignoring the header when you import? That yes, you that? that's really important. I, um, um, if was I was it? the one that created your site, you probably have it turned on, but that's something you need to check. So, so turned on to ignore the header is what is that right? right? Make sure it's turned on. Otherwise, you have to delete this row before you upload. And where is that setting at? I'll show you here. Just tell me. I can. I, I'm. Uh, it's the, under set under settings general. General, okay, because I'm I'm following. No, on. I'm sorry. It's under settings, import, export. I'm sorry, settings, import, export. Okay. And a header row says yes, so I should turn that to no. 
No, you want to leave it yes. Okay. Yes means ignore it. Yeah. Yes means you don't you don't have to delete it. Yeah, it's going to ignore it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it should be a little clearer. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Heather okay, so here, here's my it. spreadsheet. You notice how I got it set up here. It's just like that. You don't have to spell it right. You can put abbreviations. It's going to ignore this if you, if you're if you're just set to yes, okay? Yeah. yeah. And then you just uh, for a username, I think a student ID number works fantastic, okay? Um, because everybody has a unique student ID number. So that's what I would recommend using for a student ID name. Um, and then um, Fred Fordster, you type in an email. Now, every student has to have an email address here. If you don't know your student's email, you can put your own email in there if you want. They can change it later. Now, can the teachers do this or does this have to be an admin? Teacher can do this as long as, um, you know, the teacher can fill this out. And then no, I'm talking about the actual upload. Yeah, if uh, not from the teacher login, you have to, you have to be logged in as administrator. Okay, to do an the admin upload. login. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, the passwords they can, I would recommend setting all your students to the same password, make it super simple, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and just copy and paste that all the way down, you know, for all your, all your students, this would be their initial password, by the way, once they log in, they'll have to change it. Now, parent group versus group, what is this all about? Um, just like in Windows or on your desktop, you can have a folder and then a folder within a folder. A parent group would be uh, a group that holds other groups, if that makes sense. Um, so, so is it the top level or is it the subfolder? Yes, yeah, so a parent group would be the top folder and then the group would be the um, So you sub. could have automotive as the parent and then course one is this group and course two is a subgroup and so forth like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, or, or maybe it's a, by a teacher name, maybe. Okay. Maybe when we, you explained you know, it yesterday, you explained it the other, or I understood it the other way around and it didn't make sense. Ah, uh, yeah. More yeah. Like a, is, so it's like a parent child. Correct. Parent child. Now, if, if you're not going to have a parent, there's some sites where you don't have a parent child type organization, then you can leave this column blank and just put it in as a group and it would be a standalone group. But if you want to put folders inside folders, then you have to use this column. Okay. Like if you got two sites, two campuses. Yes. If you have two campuses, that's a great, and that's a great example. If you, this would be campus A over here. And, uh, and I could say group, this is my 10, my 12, 10 electrical, whatever I want to call it. Okay. Uh, so here's, and, uh, and then if this student is in another group, you just copy that and, and paste it in there again, and then just change the, the group name. So if, if they're in 1300 breaks or whatever, you just change, change that. And then of course they're still in campus A. So um, if you put in another student or let's say you jump to another class or something like that, you can put all your rosters on this one spreadsheet. Just don't leave any empty, any rows. Don't, don't leave any separating rows between groups. So you could have 200 names on this spreadsheet, fill it all out um, and then save this to your desktop. Save it to your desktop. I'm going to just leave it as an Excel document. It can also be a CSV. And once you get your document saved, um, you go here this to this upload button right here. This is your upload. You click that. And here's my file. Double click that. It uploads. I click add. And what it's going to do is basically error check. If there's any red or anything like that, then something there was an error. Maybe you uh, had um, 
maybe it was two students by the same name and email, but you were one number off here on this, on the, you didn't copy paste your one letter off on the user ID, it'll, it might throw up an error message or something like that. So just make sure you don't have any red. If you accidentally misplace a column, you can change the column orders. Like this is first name, but you could, let's say you accidentally put the last names here. You don't have to fix your spreadsheet, just change the, change the header row. Quick, quick question. If we don't have a parent group, do we still have to have that row and then leave it blank? Will the system yes. Yeah. You still, if, if it's, um, if you have it checked under settings, import, export, if it's, a, if it shows up in that header row, you have to leave it there as a placeholder. That's fine. You can turn this field completely off if you want to. And can, um, can we, can we rename the header row since it's going to ignore it or they got to be the exact way it's No, written? it does not have to be spelled like this. It, that's okay. as long as you know what you're putting in. Okay. It can be abbreviations, whatever. Yeah. Or we can set a call on a group. We could call it course. Sure. Sure. Okay. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, sure. That, that makes sense. Sure. Um, and then once you get uh, your error checked and everything's good, you click the import button and one student is imported because I already, that's just one student, but they're in two different groups. So now when I go in as a teacher, here's campus, see it created that group. That's the parent group. I open up the parent group and then here's my two courses or my two classes. Just and, as I just as I specified on the spreadsheet. And my format didn't even give me a column for parent group. Is that possible? Yes. Um, if you uh, going back here to administration. If you go over here to settings and import export, you can turn parent group off. Oh, I wonder if it's turned off on mine. Yeah, it probably is. Now, uh, so if you have this turned off, what you'd have to do then is you'd have to go in as a teacher and create the parent group ahead of time. If you wanted to use parent groups. Yeah, or it'd be, well, yeah, or um, I would just, yeah, you'd have to create both your groups actually. You'd have to create your parent group and your subgroup on the teacher login and then direct students to the subgroup. Um, I, it's much easier just to turn this on, okay? But that's a good point. Um, I'm sure that's what your deal is. This is off, so just turn it on. If I turn this off, you'll see what happens here. You're correct, I just checked it. it says yeah. parent group is to, I'm just gonna turn it on and make life easier like you said. Yeah, started. just, yeah, turn it on. Then, then uh, you'll see here, well, now that it's off, it's, it's not there anymore. Uh, uh, funny. Did I have to save it because it didn't add yeah, it? Yeah, you do have to save. You have to go all the way down, scroll all the way down, and, and hit the save button. Oh, uh, okay. Um, once you're in here as a teacher, let's say that as a teacher, you go here to groups and you create a group. I can't, let's say Campus B. Got it. And then Campus B, I teach... Uh, So now I can create my groups here as a teacher. This is, let's say 1500 AC and uh, create another group. See, now I'm, I'm creating these groups as a teacher. So here's what you have to be careful of. Now, if I wanna get students in on that spreadsheet, I have to spell it exactly how on that spreadsheet, how I specified here. So yeah, if the groups are done ahead of time. You're right. You can turn on the groups ahead of time, right? So just be aware of that. If, if if for some reason you get off on your naming and it creates duplicate groups, that's an easy fix. I'm not going to bother showing you how to fix that right now. It's just going to confuse you. But if that ever happens to anybody where you go, man, I created too many groups here. I, I got doubles of everything. Just call me. It's an easy fix. I'll, I'll walk you through that if it ever happens. Okay. Um, Cause you can move groups around in electude. You can, you can um, delete groups, obviously. If, 
just to show you here real quick, I guess. If, if I accidentally, let's say, put, I meant to put electrical 1210 in campus B, but it's in A, you can just move it over like that. It's really quite easy to uh, move content around or move classes around if you put something in the wrong group. If I want to move it back out, I can grab it and move it back out to uh, campus A. So it's really easy to move things around. A lot of clicking and dragging in, in the Lectute LMS you, to move things. Um, is there any questions about what a, what a group is in Lectute? So a group would be like your course uh, in Canvas. It's where you put your students. And then um, you can have a, gr a parent group and then you have your subgroups. One thing that's a little confusing for some folks when they're new to Electude is they got a parent group like here at Campus B, and then here's my two subgroups. And oftentimes, you, and then of course you see this up here, courses and modules, this is the content. And I'll, sometimes um, new teachers think, well, if I assign the content here, at the parent group, then these two groups will automatically get that content. And that's not so. So when you got a parent group, you're gonna ignore these three areas here. You're not gonna put content in here. You're not gonna put um, either courses or modules. You're not gonna enroll students in Campus B. Campus B only holds these two uh, subfolders. Where I wanna assign the content is inside here. So you click here. And now you see here's courses, here's modules, here's students. This is where I want to put my students in here. So if you do it manually, you're going to click the plus and type in their username, first name, last name, etc. Uh, uh, if you're if you're typing in, like if you got 10, 15 students, it's probably just as easy to do this than to fill out that spreadsheet. Uh, so teachers can enroll students for the first time manually, just typing them in. Once you got a student in there, um, then you'll want to put um, some content. And, um, here, and then if you have students that are already in the program, you can do it this way too, where you can expand your folders out. There's that AC group. See what I did there? I clicked a little plus. And I can pull students from here into AC. So if you've already got students in the platform, you don't click the plus and add them again. You drag them in from the all student or master student list. Really easy to, to move students around. So here's my course, 1500 AC. Here's my students. But right now they have nothing to do. They have no content whatsoever. Quick, so I quick need to fill this. Go ahead. So, quick question. I, I, I might divided my attention for a second. Um, when you import into groups, do they all go into all students? Yes, the all student group. Yeah, when you do it automatically pre-populates no matter what group I put them in. Right, they're all. You're going to find all your students here under all. If a student is not in a group, like if uh, they would be in unassigned. So these students here right now, they're not in any group. They're just sitting in unassigned. Okay. Does that show what group they're in? When when you click on the all students, the ones that are assigned. Does it say, does it have a column that says what group they're currently assigned to? Yep, you just have to go to, um, go into the group no, here, sorry. click. Uh, no, um, I'm just uh, under all students, though. It doesn't. Oh, under have, all students, okay, yeah, sure. It doesn't yeah, have a column. I can click on like uh, Fred Forster here. Okay, so you got to click on them to get it. You, it doesn't yeah. show them on that other page. No, no. So Fred Forster here, he is, in, he is in Campus B, 1500, yeah. yeah. That would be nice quick to be able to see who's in what group on that previous page. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can also do it this way. Um, That's a product request. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> put a column there. Just simply put yeah. a column there and say what group they're in. Right. So here, here's Nancy. She's an unassigned. Um, so, and then you can you can put put her in groups right here. So that's kind of nice. You can do that. Another thing that you can do, and this is what I would recommend if you got returning students, uh, is make your group discoverable for other students. So like, for example, I click the pencil, allow self-enrollment. 
So if you click this, hit OK, that means any student that's already on this site, any of these students here, will have a, a feature then on when they log in under their account where they can enroll themselves in a group. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm gonna log in as a student here. I must have changed my password the other day. So here, uh, this is what a student would see. Now I've got some, this is like past results. I'm not in any group right now. I'm in unassigned. So I just see my, all the work that I've done in times past, just kind of sitting there. Um, I can enroll myself in a group. I click the plus. Now the only group that's turned on right now is 1500 AC. Uh, but imagine you're a teacher, you're starting a new semester. You've already taught with selected one semester, all returning students, create your new groups, click that little button, let students log in, select their own group they need to be in, they enroll. So um, right now, if I've, I'm the student, I go, oh man, I made a mistake. They can take themselves out if they need to. So I'm, I'm, I'm in as a student right now. I don't have access to this yet though, because I haven't been approved. Uh, so I go back in as a teacher and I go to my uh, class that I set up and I must not been the, I thought that was the one. It put me right, did it put me in there automatically? So. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Um, Uh, all students. I must not have something set right because it's, uh, I don't see, uh, like I put it in there already. I try this again. Okay, I'm not in the group. Okay, I must have I must have it set on admin where it automatically just registers me. That's not the default setting. Let me change something here. You can have it so they automatically, without being approved, go in. I don't recommend that. So I must have been showing some, some somebody that. So I'm going to go back into admin here. settings. Ah, see, um, this is another important one under settings. Groups with self enroll. I didn't think I had it set to this way. Allow students to immediately become a member of a group upon request. I don't recommend that. I recommend because students can easily make a mistake. So um, make it approved by teacher. Sorry about that, I didn't mean to confuse anybody. Take this student back out. Okay, awaits approval, there we go. All right, so now enrollment request. This is what I, what I was looking for before. So um, 
you might have 25, 30 names in there when you see a student that, that has requested enrollment to your group and you can either refuse by clicking X or accept and then they come right on you. So that'll save you some time. Um, here again, if you're integrated with Canvas, none of that will apply to you. All right, um, assigning content now. So here we got our group up and running. We have a choice here. Do you want to assign something small or something large? That's kind of how I, I look at this. A course in a, in a lectage term, that's like a book. And that's my recommended thing that I'd like for most people to assign as a course. Because for every course that you assign to your students, they get a nice, neat little folder uh, that's titled by that course. They click on that folder, it opens up, and then there's their their lessons, the lesson quiz, lesson quiz, lesson quiz, and a nice, neat, tidy package. If um, so, it's it's just a lot neater for students. If you assign modules, that would be a single lesson or a single quiz. We give you the ability to do that, but they all get thrown into one big folder called other content. And it may seem like a good thing to do at the beginning of a semester to say, you know what, air conditioning, I just want to. I just want to give them, um, um, looking for air conditioning, something here. I just want to give them uh, something on, uh, well, goodness. I just want to give them the one module on, on, on AC condenser. That may seem like a good thing to do. They just got one item. But by the middle of the semester, when you got 50, 60, 100 things in there, they're going to get lost. So I don't recommend that you use this module uh, area very often. Um, take it out of there and rather assign them a complete course. So we're going to go over here to courses. And this will give me a good opportunity to explain what the difference is between automotive essentials and AST and MAST. So automotive essentials, these are our, these are the same courses, no matter where, which part of the world you, you live in, everybody gets these courses. No matter if you're in Europe, North America, South America, wherever, everybody gets automotive essentials. And you have three levels, basic, advanced, and specialist. What's unique about these courses, or what's important to remember, is you don't have to first go through basic before you're ready for advanced or specialist. Think of it this way, basic starts at the beginning, goes a little bit into the subject, and then it stops. The advanced level also starts at the beginning, goes to basics, and then a little bit further, and then it stops. So it goes deeper into the subject. And, the, and typically in most of these lessons, the further you go through them, the more difficult it gets, kind of like a video game. The specialist also starts at the beginning, but it goes all the way to the end. And the reason they kind of design things like this, in other parts of the world, they might give the student an introduction to something, so they give them the basic version. The next year, or next semester, they want that student to review, but they want them to learn more. So then they give them something in advance. And then their third year, especially like in an apprenticeship program, they, they want them to review yet again the things they've covered in the past. So then they have the opportunity to give them the specialist version and it's all new results. So um, that's, that's why they do that. Um, if you want to give your students the full and complete experience from easy to hard and you only have one, you know, you're only gonna hit that subject once, then probably select courses here from the specialist area. So electrical engineering specialist has 88 modules. It has some, um, you know, basic modules in here. For example, there is no advanced and meter module. This is the same lesson that's in basic, but uh, it's in there, it's not missing. So you can assign this, this course and you'd be assured that it has the complete and full lesson where, where some of these would, would fall short on the basic version. It's just going to go a little bit and then stop. Does that make sense? Hopefully. So that's automotive essentials. 
Yes. <laughs> so why the two different years? This course, don't use this course. I hate this version. They screwed this up so bad. Right. Um, what they did on these, on I, um, this older version, I don't think it's a very usable course beyond basic. They stuck to the very, they were very um, rigid in their course alignment. So they only put basic modules in here. They only put advanced lessons in here and they only put specialist in here. So you, you have a nice course here that's kind of full and complete. It hits every subject, but sometimes there's no advanced version of a certain module and they didn't put the basic module in there. So if you assign the course out advanced, it was missing some of the essential basic knowledge. So you just couldn't assign this as a standalone or this one as a standalone. You had to assign this one always with bits and pieces of these. And I was just, it was unusable in my opinion. And so they, they uh, finally uh, listened and they created a new version that's actually, that's why it looks like there's more modules in it. They're really not. They, they, there's a lot of repeat in there because they take all the basic and they put it in advanced. They take all the basic and they put it into specialist and they take all the advanced and they put it in here as well. So it's, it's a nice full and complete course. Uh, it's not missing anything. Uh, that's take, why there's two. If they take the basic stuff and then they go into the advanced, do so they have to retake the basic? No, it it's going to, if there was no, if there, there are certain topics where there's just a basic lesson. So when they put that lesson here in advance, that one lesson will, uh, um, be already populated as being finished. But um, if there is an advanced version of that lesson, it's there's going to be some content then that they haven't finished and they'll have to um, open that lesson up again and continue on. So it's, it's, um, they put some thought into it. I, I, I think I, I like it. It's just, uh, I didn't like the old version, but this new one, I'm very, very happy with it. I think it's finally a teach, you can actually assign in any one of these three levels and it works. It, it'll take the student from the beginning to as far as you want to go. So this goes from beginning to end. This one goes from beginning to middle. This one goes from just a little slightly beyond beginning. It just kind of brushes or touches the subject a little bit. Okay, so I have, uh, we canceled our classes last semester, about halfway through the semester, and I got a bunch of returning students wanting to kind of catch up. So if I assign them the electude full course, I can go in there and just give them credit for whatever I think they already have done and just let them do the rest rather than assign individual modules. Yeah, give them a, yeah. If, if you've assigned individual modules in the past and now you give them a course, anything that they've done in the past will show as populated or, or complete in these courses. Okay, that's good. Yeah, uh, the results are saved to the student, not the course. You, you could delete all your courses and uh, recreate everything, assign the content again to your students and everything would repopulate. So results are saved to the student account, not, um, not the courses that you put the students in. I could delete this 1500 AC course, rebuild it, put all the same students in it again, put the content in there and everything and repopulate. Okay. Okay. So automotive essentials, these are your generic theory courses. And then what we've done for the US, we've taken all this content that's in here and we've aligned it to ASE content areas. And that's what AST and MAST is. Um, so we, this would be your, your, uh, your college level courses, master in automotive service technology same lessons that are in automotive essentials, but these are rearranged differently. So here's your suspension and steering course, for example. Notice we got theory courses, theory, and tasks, theory, task, tasks. So um, we separated um, the theory from the, from the tasks. Automotive essentials has no tasks. So what makes this aligned to ASC quite a bit is, is these task courses. And these have those uh, digital, you know, lab sheets in there. So this would...
this would be as if we were doing uh, labs this semester then. Yeah. Yeah, you probably won't have much use for these, I imagine. Unless you have students working from home or something. Right. We're actually on site for two days a week. Oh, so. nice. Okay. Now, I'm in the Electude Automotive Essentials, and I clicked on Specialist. I can't put anything in the product group or the certificate template. And then if I chose Automatic Transmissions, it opens up, but I don't see anywhere to save this or to say that this is what I want to activate. Okay, all right. So, so, um, so this is the content, this is the book. It's, think of it as um, there's nothing you need to activate. It's, it's there, it's ready to, to, to serve up to your students. So, so how do I assign the students and the students, how do they, how do the students gonna get this now? Right, 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 okay. So this, uh, and we'll, we'll use this course as an example, as Automatic Transmission Specialist course. So you first have to have a group, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a group in Campus B here. I'm gonna create a new group called Automatic Transmissions. There's my group, my class. Okay. And I can, I can put students in here later. Now, what I need to do is fill this with content. So I select my class here first. You can see it's selected, automatic yeah. transmissions. I go over here to courses. And if, I, if I'm on this screen, I already got the course pulled up. There's my course, there's my student group. You can do a click, drag, and you can drop it in like that. And you gotta go down and around. You can't go lateral. I was just making that more visually. Uh, um, okay, so if I'm in the courses, then I can just you can drag from box to box. Yep. Okay. That's one way. You can see how I did it there. I'll take it and out of here. Now you're Read in it. the course. So if I go back to courses, uh, what's it? it uh, yeah. So you can drag it like that. That's one way. The other way. I just did that. Is if I'm here at specialist and I see it down here in the list, meaning I don't have this course open yet, it's not showing up here. I can click and drag this up to the student tab like that. I did the same thing, transmission specialist. Let me show you that again. I'm gonna take it out, delete it. It's not there now. I go back to courses or specialist. I can drag it just like that. If I wanna do wheels and tires too, I can drag it like that. I see. Just, it's just click, drag and drop. And so once yeah. the students log in, it, they, they know they've already been assigned that group and it'll automatically make these available for them to click yes, on. Yes, they'll, they'll get a folder for each of these. If you wanna change the order and how it displays, maybe you want them to go through wheels and tires first, you just drag it up there like that. Okay. The other way is to use these plus buttons. So if, if I go over here, um, and let's say I want to assign um, gasoline system sensors. I have to first put it in my favorites. This would be like if you're if the only thing you have is the cell phone in your pocket and you got to assign a course, put that course in your favorites and then you click the plus and then it's going to be here in your favorites list. And uh, okay. And then you add it that way. So if you're away from the office and the only thing you got in your hand is a is your cell phone, then you can, uh, you know, assign something that way as well. It's much more easy though, if you have one of these in your hand, you can use the click and drag method, so. How are we doing on time? I got plenty of time, but I don't know about you all. We can extend the session if folks are interested, but we're about 10 minutes away from the end of what was scheduled. Okay. So, I think we need, I think we I need gotta, to keep going. Uh, Thomas has got to answer off his questions and then we can get to it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Um, well, I put a course in there and I went back to courses and all I see is automatic transmissions related stuff. How do I get back to the whole list to add something else? Oh, very good. So you're, you're on the screen you're on then is this. It must uh, be that, yeah. Uh, you're on this screen right here where you're right. under courses and you got that pulled up. Use these little breadcrumbs up here. 
Yeah, hang on. So a if I want to go all the way back out, I can go all the way back out to essentials this way. And then you right. just like almost like layers on the onion, you start drilling down. Okay, got it. And uh, and then like right now, if I if I drug from from uh, going over here to students and I selected another group, now I got sixteen hundred inch performance there. What would happen if I went from here to here? What am I assigning? The basics course, right? Everything in basics. I just assigned tons of courses right now. Okay. I just gave them the encyclopedia right here. I threw the whole, it's even taking right. a bit for it to load. It's <laughs> slowing down here. There, I assigned all that. I just assigned about a thousand lessons right there. So, um, so you can assign a, a, a tremendous amount or you can make it very small, however you want to do it. I wouldn't recommend doing this, by the way. So. Okay. <laughs> Is it possible to assign due dates for each section? Ah, that's a great, uh, yes, you can if you, um, if you assign a parent course. So Automotive Essentials, these typically don't really have parent courses. You open them up and it's just lessons on the inside. So if I assign this course, I wouldn't be able to put any locks on this because there's no subcourse on the inside. However, with AST and MAST, or if you design your own courses, uh, you can put locks on these. Um, I might just use this opportunity really quick to show you how to build your own course. Um, so you have these predefined courses that are already built, but oftentimes the teacher just wants to build something custom from scratch. So I could say this is um, custom um, electrical. This is gonna be my parent course, okay? That's like the cover of my book. And then on the inside of that, I'm gonna create some week one. And I'm creating the structure first here. I'm just going to create three weeks and I think everybody gets the idea what I'm doing here. No, you got to do all 52. All 52. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, so my parent course and then here's my sub courses like chapters in a book. And what I'm going to do is populate these with modules. So now I got week one. I go over here to modules. I'm building an electrical course. This is why we give you this tab. So you can explore folders and you can drag whatever the heck you want in there and then. So, yeah, I want ammeter in week one, ammeter quiz. Don't worry about the order that you're putting these in. You can sort this list by level, alphabetical order, whatever works best for you here. Yeah, I want voltmeter in there, voltmeter quiz, and I want ohmmeter. So we'll grab that one here too. All right, so there's my little course. And what I can do right now is I could assign, go back here one step, I'm gonna assign this whole custom electrical course, to this engine performance class here. Now, they've got the whole thing. I'm not even done building it yet. So I could open this up and I could lock weeks two and week three, just lock it. I don't want them to see that yet because I'm still building it. And then this one, um, I'm gonna leave that unlocked for a period. So from to today's date, and then I'm gonna give them uh, till the 26th to get this done. So how that's gonna work then is while they're working on this, I'm going to go back over here courses and I'm going to start filling these up. So if you're building a self-made course from scratch, this is how I recommend you do it. Build it on the fly as you're teaching the course kind of. That way you don't overfill things. You can kind of monitor things, you know, oh, well, looks like it's going to take students a little bit more time to finish this. So I'm going to give them, you know, a, a couple more days to finish that, you know, so it's very, very flexible when you do it this way. And then by the time you're, you're done with the semester, you got your whole course built and then you just reassign the whole thing next year, change your dates and everything's on autopilot. Did you say that all goes into one big 
folder though when you do it yep, that way? This is this is your big folder right here. Oh, that's from Electrical folder. 101. And so you can see this one has six modules. These two are are yeah. locked right now. The students can't see that. But I can go under here in courses and I can continue to build these out. So can you just go back real quick and how you the first few steps were built for creating that? Sure. Custom. So courses, you always go to the courses. So Look at the little uh, le uh, the icons. That kind of shows you what the what it is. So under modules, look at it's a single, it's one Lego block. So a module in Electude is something very small. It's one lesson, one quiz. Modules then go into courses. Courses is plural. It's it's content that's stacked together. It's put in a nice wrapper, and it's bundled up. And then you take these courses and you assign it to students. So it kind of makes sense if you get into Electude's head, modules go into courses, courses go to students. And that's kind of how they thought this out. Okay. So you go over here to courses, self-made. These are the predefined courses down here that Electude built. Oh, I see, okay. And then you go into self-made. You can also make copies of Electude's courses, by the way, if you didn't want to start from scratch. But then you click the plus, you want to make a new course. Okay. You can also, um, import courses but i'm not gonna that's another day um and then you title it so we if we have a scorm of our own that we made we can import that yeah yeah if you're if you uh, if you've got some other supplier that Me. <laughs> yeah if you've got Me. content that's scorm compliant yeah absolutely you can pull it in here okay. cool okay. i want to see that if you do it because i don't uh, you're the first person that's ever uh, oh. I got a ton of stuff. I just finished up a couple. I'll send you a couple. I'll send you, I'll send you something. Huh. You want cool. it in the score? You want it in the zip format? I'll send it to you if I can. That's not, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sure the designers at Electi would appreciate hearing that because they, they built these tools in and sometimes they, they go, ah, did we really, did we really need to build that? Is there, is there teachers really out there that maybe do that? And so it's, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, that's, tell that's them, cool. Tell them, you know one. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, really, Electude, there's so many tools and things. It's going to take you a year to learn all the features. And, and that's why you got me as your resource. I want you to pick up the phone and call me anytime questions arise. Uh, there are so many features. I'm, we're just scratching the surface here. And for most folks, get a group, assign the content, and you're done. But if you want to go wild and custom and do some crazy stuff, I mean, if you have an idea, we probably have a tool for it. It's kind of this, it's, a, it's quite a Swiss army knife. Um, you can even design your own lessons. Uh, not to scare you here, but just to, real briefly, you can go over here to modules, go into engine repair, and you can create your own stuff. I could say this is, Imagine this, uh, introduction to auto shop. Imagine taking, going around your shop and taking hundreds of photographs, where to hang the brooms, where to hang, uh, where the electrical shutoff switch is, where the fire extinguishers are, and you can create your own lesson. You can put your picture here, and then you can write your own text and your own questions. There is so much you can do. Uh, yeah. John, you okay? Oh yeah, COVID. Yeah, so. Uh, I hope not, truly. No. Okay, it's not a joking matter. Uh, allergies and the f fires that are going on, man. But... Yeah, the fires, yeah. Um, questions, comments? Just want to make sure I got your phone number. You might be sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, that's what I'm, uh, I'm a former instructor myself. Uh, I taught for 12 years and uh, uh, I drank the Electude Kool-Aid about 10 years ago and now I work for the company. So I've been with Electude full time since about 2012, so. So if I drop that entire transmission, automatic transmission thing into my course, yep. can I remove certain things from that once it's in there like that? Yeah, what you do is swap it out later. Say so what you do. Um, let's do. Let's go back to that course. Where was that at? Uh, what's it say? Let's see here. Let's. Um, 
Okay, I got a couple of quick questions for the group that doesn't pertain to Lectude. But yeah. you guys are going to go back and teach in the lab. How are you doing that? Very carefully, very safely. Yeah. Smaller classes, face masks, face shields, um, wiping down everything, gloves. Um, I'm going to try and teach outside. And we're opening up the doors. You got, yeah. you got warmer weather down there for the most part. We're going to yeah. try to keep our doors open if we can as much as possible. Yeah, we, we took over some other areas that uh, didn't have anything running, so there'll be classes with a dedicated space. It's just them once a week. How many students in that dedicated, I mean? Uh, the average class right now is running about 20 students. Wow, we're at 16. We, we, had, uh, we actually have two auto labs that are conjoined, and we rolled up the doors between them, so it's one giant lab, and we'll be able to spread them out. Right. We're, we've uh, we've kind of negotiated a 12-person mm -hmm. max, uh, four days a week, three people a day. Um, so I'll be teaching class every day, but only three people each day. Wow. Well, and our lab time was set uh, for each class at about five hours, and we're probably going to split the students. We'll see half of them for the first right. two hours or so, and the other half we're for the still, other. We're still on the COVID watch list, so they're not going to let us open for at least another three weeks. Okay. But, we're going to do online for as much as we can. I think electrical is mostly thought and preparation anyway. So I got to teach them how to use some of the equipment when we hit the lab. Yeah. yeah. I am expecting them to have, you know, intermittent shutdowns for us. You know, somebody's sick, so we're going to close campus for two weeks and then. That's just that we had one of our custodians check in. And so like they locked down the campus for three weeks. Yeah. You know, can we get back quick, real quick, to have Darcy show us that what I asked him about removing certain parts out of a complete yeah. course? Yeah, so here's here's my class, automatic right. transmissions. Here's the, the course that's currently assigned. It's the Electude version, okay? Right. Right. Now, the Electude version, it's like made of granite, made of stone. You can't change it unless you copy it. Then it becomes a self-made course. So what you can do is click on it. Uh, this will be actually, I'm, I clicked on it from the student tab, so this would be like the results page. Yeah, that's this is I'm a at. hot link up here that'll watch what happens when I click this. It's going to shift over to courses when I do this. See how it brought the course yeah. up? I mean, here's the modules in there. Yeah. Look for this little icon here. This is your copy course. So instead of building a course from scratch, I can make a copy. Are you sure you want to copy this course? And it then turns it into a self made. And is that self-made? Is that in my student group now as a self-made? No, it's, it's, they still got the regular version. So what I would do is I would, uh, oh, what I'm did gonna I call this Darcy Automatic Transmission Specialist to see, you know, it's a different course. And I'm gonna okay. take. Um, I missed a step, Darcy. I clicked yeah. on the link. I, yeah. I, I clicked on the link and I, I copied it. And that's as far as I got from copy. Okay, great. So look up, click on courses self-made, go to self-made. Okay, so now I got to go to self-made. Yeah, it is uh -huh. on self-made. Okay, there it is, copy of transmission. Special. There you go. And then, and then once you got it pulled up, you click the little pencil and take the word copy of and put, you know, title it whatever you want. Okay. You can even put maybe a, something from your syllabi here. You could put a course description in here. It's your course now. Uh, you can put a certificate on it if you want. Uh, okay. You can move things around. You can, you know, slide things around up and down, whatever you want. If you find something in there you don't want in there, you can take uh, this this lesson for sure. I would probably take out because uh, it has been a long time since I've had any kind. Of, I probably never had any math like this in my life. But it's they have the students calculate how much torque this transmission can pass through these clutch packs based on pressure surface area friction characteristics it's a and now how do I, and how do i get the self-made course into my into my uh, yeah okay so once you uh, once you get your course fixed up you you go over here to your student group and so here's here's the course they got now i'm going to just go ahead and throw my course in there along with it okay and then you just swap it out you just delete this one from it 
and then I can go back into the self-made course and, and edit it at any time. Yeah, if once you got it in there, once it's assigned, you can go over here to courses, anything you change here. So if I drag torque converter up to the top, right, that, may, that automatically changes it for the students. Or if I add a module in here, it automatically changes it for the students because it's assigned to them already. Okay, so you do all your work and your editing here and then you assign it to students over here. And then you can always go back and change it if you decide later. Absolutely. Okay. And you can make copies of your own copies too. You can make a copy. And uh, if you copy. accidentally delete a course, we've had people do that. Uh, it does go into this deleted, you know, you might have spent six hours on that course and then you accidentally deleted it. Okay. It's going to be here it. in this deleted course trash bin and you just reactivate it. Or what usually yeah, happens is another yeah, teacher yeah. accidentally deletes it. They, they, you know, more than one teacher on a website accidentally deletes another teacher's course. Um, yeah, now you can just re retrieve it. So it'll be there for six days, just like the other stuff. Hey guys, I'm gonna go, but thank you. Thank you for all your help. Thank John, you. thank you for joining us. Great questions, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I'm kind of dominating the questions, but <laughs> well, your questions are great. I'm just trying to figure out how to get my students enrolled in the, if I should do Canvas or not. I'm just going to use uh, Excel. I think I'm just yeah. going. I got my great Excel formulas, and they do all my grading for me already. I think classes I started today, so I don't even have a couple more days. Right. Yeah. Classes. Yeah, and you can always do the. You know, if you decide to do the Canvas integration later, you can always pick that up some other point. But you know, for the spring semester, if you yeah, we're. Know, I saw how to take it off in case I got to do that. I just got to be an administrator. So. Yeah. We're already integrated into Canvas, but um, my students haven't populated on the Electude. Is that because they have to go in there and add the code or? Yeah, maybe the integration. Are you able to log into Canvas? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm logged into right now. I'm okay, in my so course shell with in. all my settings. Yeah, you might, you might check um, if you, or do you see groups in your Canvas? Um, yeah, so yeah. I've, I've dragged the elect to, you know, thing into the list on the left of the canvas shell for this class. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, modules is all there. The courses where I can build everything's there. When I go to the students tab, it's all empty because I haven't populated it. But there's no students that show up yet either. Oh, okay. Now, what about in your canvas side? There's no students there either. Well, if I go, well, if I'm in the same canvas shell, if I just slide up to, um, the people tab, you know, it shows the 20 some odd students I have enrolled. But they're not in Electube yet. Yeah, when I go back to the Electube tab, there we go. It's on students. It's the auto 130 transmission. It even has the section number populated for me. But uh, when you go to students, you know, I can hit plus and I can add them, but nothing's yeah. in there. No, no, you don't do that. I, I think I think what's going to happen there and here again, I'm, I'm kind of new to the Canvas side. I don't have a test site on my own. I could probably have Jacob answer that question, but what I assume is is for the student, you could try it with this your is there is there a test student that you can turn on? I think you actually maybe now am I gonna have to hand out the um subscription numbers to them or because they're in our canvas shell with this, is it gonna populate them automatically? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think they might have to click on Electude before it'll actually show up on your Electude. I'm so wondering I, if maybe that's why I don't see students on the, the tool yet. Yeah, I think that's probably why. I could I can call some of these students. I know who some of them are. Maybe I can get them to go on there and click on it and see what happens. Yeah, they'll be asked for that access code when they do. Of course, you know, when I go to the uh, student view, uh, where is it? Uh, right over here, Electude. It's not showing the Electude button on the student view, even though I've drug it up into their bar. Everything else is coming and going. Do you have, there is one little step you got to do in each of your courses. I wonder, maybe you're not fully linked. I wonder. Uh, well, they just got it done this morning. Okay. So I'm, I'm playing have around. Assign, you have to assign content into those shells too for the students to be able to click on something. So do you have yeah. any content assigned yet? Uh, no, I've just, I've actually been putting content in and taking it out in the last, you know, 10 minutes trying to get used to it. Gotcha. What's, what's your email address, uh, Jason? It's uh, J Dearman, D-E-A-R-M-A-N. I got it. Yeah. I'm going to send you, 
the teacher manual for Canvas because you're, you're going to probably want to have that open when you're. Yeah, well, I'll read through it and then I'm going to have a meeting with my uh, auto staff here in the next day. Yeah. Um, Darcy, how did you delete that um, course from inside the student folder? I just Can click on it. Just make one click on it and then there's going to be an X and, it's, and when you click the X, I'll say, are you sure you want to delete this? I don't, see, I don't see an X. Oh, up at, oh, so once it opens up the module, I get it. Okay. It's got, you click on it, it opens it up, shows all the, the stuff that's inside, then, it, then you can delete it. Yep. Yep. Okay, got it. Could you send that same email for teacher to me also? Yeah, John Peterman, Peterson? Yes, yes. I'd like it to, please, Kalen Barabish. That's the um, what's, I don't know if I got your email, John. What's your email? J Peterson at. Oh, there Barrow. I found you. I got you. All right. And then who else wants one? Kalen Baravich. And I'll spell it for you. Is in boy. E H R A. B is in Victor. E S H K. At S M C C D. Dot E D U. Hmm. I. I, I missed something. I'm sorry. Um, B, I, that's okay. That's why I say it like that. <laughs> can, you uh, see, can you see his name? Can you yeah. see his picture at the top when he yeah. speaks? Okay. B is is in last, last name, first initial? Yeah, last name, first initial. You got it. Okay. And then at? smccd.edu. Okay, well, thank you guys. I'm going to go. Okay. All right. I'll get, I'll get everybody um, the email and we'll, uh, we'll just take it the, from there. That was the I think we'll probably have to probably let you guys go. I'm sure Pam's got other things she needs yeah. to get done today. Okay. Well, but, thanks hey. everyone for joining. And if we have additional questions, we can always do an advanced uh, faculty training in the future. So yeah, we can do available. So please, if you have any questions, don't hold back. We'll schedule another training. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you again, Pam, Thanks. for everything. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Pam. Good okay, luck. Bye -bye. So Darcy, I've got to jump to another call. Okay. So um, maybe we can touch base tomorrow. Um, yeah, that'd be fine. And uh, you're up for tomorrow afternoon. So five o'clock Pacific time tomorrow. I'm gonna send out other emails just to make sure everybody else uh, is joining us for at least one of these trainings. Okay, very good. But thank you what, so much, appreciate everything. Yeah, that, that last gentleman that, uh, what school was he at again? I don't think I- Skyline, Kalen. What school again? Skyline. Skyline, Skyline. Skyline. okay, gotcha. All right, Skyline. okay, got it. Perfect. Thanks so much. We'll talk tomorrow. All right. Very good. Thanks, Pam. Thank you. Thank you so much.